Hello, thanks for tuning in. My name's Stuart, classical record collector. I also sell classical records on my website, lpclassical.co.uk. And today I want to introduce you, if you don't know already, this pianist, uh, Bella Davadovic. So I'm going to be um, just saying a few words about this pianist shortly and playing you an extract from that record, which really impressed me. Um, but before that, let me just um, say a few things. Obviously, I'd just like to say that, you know, some people have left comments implying that I'm more of a collector and that, you know, uh, for them, the music comes first. No, believe me, I'm absolutely, the music comes first for me. And uh, that is absolutely primary. I've got, I'm more forthright in my opinions about classical music than I'm about records. That is absolutely for certain. I mean, whether Decker's the better or DG or Phillips, uh, you know, White Golds. I mean, I'm not really passionate about, I don't argue for any one of one of those with any great passion. I'm interested, of course, as a collector, the differences in sound quality and everything. But one thing I am passionate about uh, is classical music. And I've got opinions just like everybody else. And if I'm convinced that obviously I'm right on a particular point, then I will, I will normally argue that point. Now, look, classical music is a very subjective thing. Uh, it can't be measured. You know, we can't measure and say, well, one piece is better than another. Now, the problem with that is uh, I'm an amateur. Let's say I'm an amateur composer with hardly any experience. And if we're saying that all classical music is equal, what you're saying is there that I could write a symphony and I could claim that, you know, um, it's all equal, so I'm as good as Beethoven. No, that's not how it works. Now, I agree that music is subjective, but there are um, there are opinions and points of view which are out of uh, reality, which are out of sync with, you know, what is considered to be um, reasonable. So I presented this record last week or the previous week, it's it's Mozart K452, um, the fantastic piano quintet, the absolute jewel in the crown, in my opinion, of all uh, piano quintets, a really special work. And it's paired with uh, the Beethoven piano quintet, which, is a, which was a homage work written by a very young Beethoven. He was only 25. Okay, at 25... Mozart had one of the great operas of all time, Idomeneo, under his belt. He was an early developer. Beethoven was not an early developer in any way similar to Mozart and Schubert. It took him a bit of a while to get going. So at 25, Mozart already had a vast number of uh, great pieces of music behind him, and Beethoven didn't. At 25, Beethoven was still what you would call a silver composer, um, fledgling, really. And he was searching for his, obviously, his own voice, and he was still developing. And he did a credit-worthy job in composing his piano quintet, which, uh, let's face it, he'd heard Mozart's work, and he decided to, you know, um, try and emulate what Mozart had done. Um, I've looked around at critical opinion on this, and I haven't found any noteworthy musical critic that rates the Beethoven quintet anywhere near uh, Mozart. Um, if you could find a notable music critic that says, oh yeah, the Beethoven is approaching Mozart's quality here, um, I would be absolutely amazed. So it staggered me when somebody left a comment saying that, because I'd implied that the Beethoven quintet shouldn't really be on the same record as a Mozart, because on the one on the one hand, I could see why it would be, because it's a homage work and Beethoven's a great composer, but his piano quintet is not a great piece of music. Uh, you know, obviously, there is a there is a great lack of quality and imagination, and the quality of invention in all three movements is severely lacking compared with, you know, obviously his better work. That's my subjective opinion. But when I'm listening to the Mozart, it brings tears to my eyes. You know, it gives me a really special feeling, and it kind of transports me uh, <clears throat> in a way that the Beethoven just doesn't. Mozart is full of poetry. Beethoven is just like standard prose. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad piece. It's credit worthy and it's worth listening to. But to say that, uh, you know, at 25, Beethoven had 
no notable pieces of music behind him. When Mozart composed this, I think he was near 30, he had uh, the Mass in C minor, he had uh, many, many great piano concertos, the Sinfonia Concertante, uh, great symphonies, the Linz Sinfonia. He already had a big catalogue behind him of absolutely great works. Um, so to suggest that the Beethoven Quintet is anywhere remotely near uh, this Mozart piece, this special piece, is absolutely absurd. Yet somebody did come on and suggest that and suggested that because they had played both these pieces, that somehow their uh, authority trumped my uh, my position on it, which is absolute nonsense. Because if you want to start referring to authority, yeah, I can find all those great um, noteworthy critics, musical critics, musicologists over the last hundred years um, are going to contradict you and agree with me and disagree with you. So, okay, yeah, I've got a lot of opinions in music, but to suggest that uh, very early Beethoven is anywhere near the quality of, uh, you know, Mozart at his zenith is an absolutely absurd thing to write on a channel and you should be ashamed of yourself. But you won't be writing anything more on my channel because I muted you. I don't want to hear anything more from you. Okay, so that being said, yeah, you see, uh, I'm a music fan first and I'm a record fan second. Uh, I'm very forthright in my opinions about music. Mozart, Beethoven and Bach for me are the three great, the, the, the holy trinity, if you like, of music. And they're, they are equals, all of them, but they all had early periods and, you know, later periods when they were stronger. So although they're equals, um, it's like for Mozart, his quintet was one of the best things he ever composed. For Beethoven, his quintet isn't one of the best things he ever composed. It's one of the worst things he ever composed. So, yeah, let me move on then. Yeah, so this lady, Bella Davadovic. So I never heard of her. Um, I took a chance on this on eBay. I bought this, I think, for about five pounds. And I just, the reason I'm showcasing her is because I was really impressed with her playing. I'm not that keen on Prokofiev and Scriabin, but when I listened to the quality of her playing on this, I mean, her touch on the piano not just her precision, but the phrasing um, is absolutely exquisite. It's really, it's really precise. It's really crisp. I'm going to play you um, a short uh, a, a movement from the Prokofiev uh, Sonata. I think the middle movement, a, a very sort of staccato, crisp kind of, uh, you, you'll see. I mean, the quality is absolutely incredible. Uh, she was born in 1928. I've had a look at, obviously she's Russian, and I must say that probably Russian pianists are my favorite overall, with with some exceptions. I think that the, the pedagogy they've got around, uh, the way that they teach music in Russia is probably surpasses what is done in the West, because I've noticed that soloists, violinists, and uh, pianists from Russia in particular have got a very musical touch and I mean that as very high praise. They seem to understand the music and the techniques that they the technique that they tend to have um, is like flawless. You know, it's effortless, and you can feel you can't you can't sense any effort when the music is being played. It's just you know pure music. It kind of washes over you. And uh, I mean, she's one of the best that I've heard. Otherwise, I wouldn't be showcasing her. A lot of the time I hear a new pianist, I think, oh, that's nice. But I mean, this this one really impressed me. So I went to have a look at her discography, or at least I went on to um, I went on to eBay to have a look. And I'll just tell you that she's done a lot. Obviously, born in 1928, she's got quite a lot that she's done on Philips. Um, uh, you know, she's done all sorts of stuff. She's recorded quite a bit on eBay. There's quite a bit available and it's not too expensive. Um, you know, I can see quite a bit now. You can buy most of her records, so sort of sell for around about ten pounds. Uh, she's done a lot. So there's a lot on to, on CD as well. There's there's a 1963 Melodia here, so that would be really interesting to have. You know, that Melodia record that I saw advertised on uh, eBay. I wouldn't mind having that. I might even make a bid on that one. Yeah. So. Yeah, let, let me just see what that is. 
it's with Kondrashin conducting and it's let me have a look it's Chopin piano concerto number two it's a melodia it's selling for 35 euros and 99 no I'm not going to pay that and it's coming from Germany no I'd love to have that it looks like it's a mono but no I'm not going to pay that amount I'll see what I can get in the UK so um yeah so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play that uh, movement and you can hear for yourself how good she is and if you know of this pianist uh you know let me know your your comments I showcased somebody last week and you know I thought he was really good I can't remember his name actually I I did a video last week or the week before he did the three buck piano concertos and I thought they were excellent somebody left a message saying that Phillips got rid of him after a couple of records for some reason, which was a shame because he was really good. And um, yeah, so Bella Davadovich, and uh, here we are. I'm going to play.